Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of UK and this video is inspired by a request from Claudia who wanted me to speak on the year of return, especially in particular with regard to the 5,000 acres with no mule um, offered to Africans, people of African descent. Free land, no payment for the land. And there's 5,000 5, acres set aside under the year of the return. So um, what I'm going to let you know is the criteria. Um, you might be of African descent, but how do you know you're of African descent? But are you of African descent by virtue of being black? Or could you come from somewhere else? That is the question. Anyway, you're going to need a DNA report. But I'm going to let you know... Um, the criteria in a moment. Let me just um, explain the year of the return to you so, you so that people who do not know about the year of the return can have some understanding of why it's in place. Okay, so this year 2019 marks the 400th year since the Dutch ship White Lion arrived in Jamestown in the British colony that was to become the Commonwealth of Virginia. The arrival of indentured slaves was the opening chapter in one of the most horrific events in human history. Proud African men and women from highly civilised and accomplished kingdoms and nations were savagely assaulted by European invaders and taken away through seduction or force from the motherland. In 2000, the country passed a law on the right of abode which allows a person of African descent to apply and be granted the right to stay in Ghana indefinitely. And recently, the country set up a diaspora affairs bureau under the Foreign Affairs Ministry to provide a sustainable link between the Ghanaian diaspora and various government agencies to achieve development and investment goals. However, it's not as easy for African Americans. I don't like the word African Americans because it makes me feel of just um, Africans in America. And it applies to all people of African descent. So I'm not even going to say, I took this out of, um, I'll put the link below. But I, I'm, I'm just going to say it's not easy for black people. For me, I'm just going to say black people because it or people of colour. Because to me, it, this is what this covers. It doesn't just cover African-Americans. So, however, it's not easy for black people in Ghana. Only Rita Marley, wife of late reggae icon Bob Marley, has been granted the indefinite stay. And that only happened last year. And I understand there's 3,000 um, people, uh, whether it's black Caribbeans or black Americans or whatever they are, black British, who have, um, who are living in Ghana and they haven't been um, naturalised yet. They haven't got their paperwork. So it's similar like the UK, really. It's supposed to take six months, but it's taking them years to get their paperwork and be registered. So at the moment, every year or every two years, they're having to renew their work permit. They're having to renew their visa and all that kind of stuff. So they don't feel settled. So apparently they are working on that. So just so you know, it's not a question of you just jumping on a plane and turning up in Ghana and claiming this land. It's much more uh, convoluted than that. OK, those who applied years ago are yet to receive any response from the Interior Ministry, whose, whose charter, oh God, I've lost the other page, OK, whose charter states that the process should only take six months. The Ghana Caribbean Association and the African American Association of Ghana say they are engaging the appropriate government department on the matter. Most people who live in Ghana with residency or work permits need to renew them every year or two. There is no permanent arrangement. OK, so the year of return, Ghana 2019, is a major landmark marketing campaign targeting the African-American diaspora market to mark 400 years of the first enslaved Africans arriving in Jamestown, Virginia, which I said before, the year of the return has already meant that Jamaicans can visit Ghana and Nigeria without a visa. 
which is excellent. The year of the return gives the black diaspora an opportunity to contribute and safely invest in their motherland. And that's regardless of their place of birth, providing they can prove they are of African descent. Um, okay. Right of abode. So the right of abode is more or less the same in any country. So don't think that just because you're going to Africa or repatriating to Africa, it's going to be any easier than people coming to repatriate in the UK. They're, I mean, they're talking about without the bureaucracy, there is bureaucracy. There has to be bureaucracy. Otherwise, anyone can up and go um, regardless of their background, regardless if, got, if they're criminals or murderers or, you know, slobs. That's not what this is about. This is about decent people going to Africa to invest in the country. That's what it's really about. OK, so the, the, the gift is 5,000 acres of land for you to invest in. So the land is free, but the process is not. Okay, so first of all, you need to know about the right of abode. The right of abode here, you need a lot of criteria. The right of abode in Ghana, it's similar, very similar. So the right of abode, the concept of right of abode under immigration law, this is Ghana immigration law, is that is that person having the right of abode shall be free to live and come and go into and from the country without let or hindrance. Section 17 in brackets 1 of the Immigration Act 2000 Act 573 provides that subject to this section, the minister may on application and with approval of the president grant the status of right of abode to a person of African descent who is of good character. The Ghanaian residency programme does have some stipulations. Black people looking to resettle in Ghana must be at least 18 years old, be of good character, i.e. financially independent, and have not been convicted of a criminal offence, nor should they have been sentenced to more than 12 months in prison. And this information must be attested by two Ghanaians who are notary publics, lawyers, senior public officers or other class, other class of person approved by the ministers. They must be Ghanaian. OK, um, a little background here is that when the African World Reparation and Repatriation Truth Commission met for the first time in Accra in 1999, they issued a declaration that called for 777 trillion over five years as reparation for enslaving Africans during the colonization of the continent. The money was to come from those nations of Western Europe and the Americas and institutions who participated and, benefit, and benefited from the slave trade. I don't know if they got it. In November 2001, Ghana's parliament passed legislation which allows any person of African descent in the diaspora to live and work in Ghana indefinitely. So you don't have to be of Ghanaian descent, but you do need to be of African descent. So, Ghana has taken a bold initiative on the African continent by passing at the Immigration Bill number 573, which recognises her sons and daughters who were taken illegally from Africa into bondage to America. Immigration Bill number 573 is the right of abode to African slave descendants of the diaspora to live in Ghana. Traditional rulers are being encouraged to set lands aside for resettlement and, de and development in the areas of agriculture, small scale industry and education. There are claims that Africans enslaved each other, but this could be a misinterpretation of words. For example, the Yoruban word Iru does not mean slave, but servant, and that never did Africans practice a debasement of humanity as slavery did. So, um, 
apart from the slavery era disclosure law passed by California back in 2000, little has actually been done. That's with regard to that 777 um, rep reparations request. Um, but JP Morgan Chase, for example, is the only company to come forward. For example, it's one of the few companies to come forward and apologize for its role in the transatlantic trade. According to 2014 estimates, more than 3,000 African Americans and people of Caribbean descent live in Ghana, a country of about 26 million people. Um, while some returnees have gone through the emotional journey of tracing their families through DNA testing, for the majority who just come to visit, the feeling of being home on the continent is satisfying. So you will have to do a DNA test. And you will have to prove that you are of African descent. Not just because you're black, you can't say, oh, I'm of African descent. You have to prove it. And, and you'll have to pay for that DNA test. I think they're about 150 quid. Some, I think it ranges between 150 and 500, depending on um, where you go and who does it. Um, currently, there are about 200 million people in the Americas identifying themselves as of African descent, according to the United Nations. Millions more live in other parts of the world outside the African continent, and in most cases, they experience racism and discrimination. Can you imagine if everybody up to went to um, to Africa? I wonder if it could accommodate two hundred million. Just supposing. I guess so. I don't know. Anyway, to promote the respect for the protection of their human rights, the UN General Assembly proclaimed 2015 to 2024 as the International Decade for the People of African Descent to be marked annually on the 25th of March. Now, I don't know if that's a holiday, but the 25th of March is a special day for people of African descent. Now, the most important part, what you need to know if you want to move to Ghana, take advantage of these five acres of free land, 5,000 acres of free land. And yeah, so um, the source here is E. Cole Simpson. And yeah, so number one, you must be of African descent, i.e. biological family, ancestry, genealogy, and so that has to be proved by a DNA. You must have a DNA report. So that's the first thing you need. Once you've got that, you need to have a background check. You need to get a DBS. It used to be called a CRB. It's a document from the Criminal Records Bureau. It's now, it's now the DBS, um, which is this disclosure and barring service. So you need that police report. I don't know if you need the extended one. You probably would be best to get the extended one instead of you paying for the the short one and then only to be told that you need the extended one because this is to show that you have no criminal records and nothing that will show you up as being um less than honest okay so you've got your d you've got your you've got your dna report and you've got your crb check or dbs form okay first two those are the two main documents and of course you've got to have money You've got to have money because even though the land is free, you're going to have to pay for land char charges and registry fees and all kinds of stuff. So you need to have money. OK, so then you're going to have to complete the Living in Ghana orientation program. And that will be held at the Pan-African Village. Now, you're going to need to stay there for 10 days and you the accommodation is provided, but you do have to pay for it. OK. So it's like they're giving you a gift, but you're having, they're giving you a gift by the land, but you're going to have to pay for it in other ways. I don't know how much it will amount to, but I kind of think, well, well, you're going to have to construct it. That's going to cost you a bit. But yeah. Anyway, people have gone over there and they've built five bedroom guest houses and stuff like that. So comparatively, it's still going to be cheaper and you're still going to have a better quality of life even if you have to fork out 10 grand. You know what I mean? 
so anyway um what else so you've got your dna you've got you've got to complete the living in ghana orientation program you've got to stay in ghana for 10 years and all of these are mandatory okay it's not you can't pick and choose what you want to do you've got to have your police background check you've got to participate in a local community benefit program like you know involve yourself in a school you might even want to set up your own school set up a library or volunteer in a library any local program you must commit to do that because they're looking for people to go over there to invest their skills and their talents in the country to build up the country they don't want layabouts they don't want criminals they don't want anybody who don't have no ambition they want people who've got ambition and who are going to help build up the country. That's what they want. So they're giving people an opportunity to get out of a situation where they don't feel worthy to be placed in a situation where they do. And they can only do that themselves. Um, they must respect the culture, of course, and the people of Asebio and abide by the laws and regulations of Ghana. So you can't go over there pompous and arrogant and think you can disrespect people just because they look like natives or just because they don't look wear a suit i mean some of them just just i'm just using that as an example you have lots of people who are westernized over there and you have lots of westernized africans but i'm just talking about people who see people you know maybe native africans and who feel that they're better than them and they have an attitude and they're arrogant and disrespectful that is not going to work you need to not, you need to be humble and you need to go over there and respect and work and do what you need to do and be a part of the community build up the community be a part of the community everyone just one family okay so you must reside in asabeu which is the area where this land is um for at least two weeks in every year um other than that you have no other obligations as far as I know but you need to be there at least two weeks in every single year that is another criteria it's mandatory so don't think you can get the land leave it there don't do nothing with it and say you've got a piece of land in Africa some people do that you know they go and buy a piece of land oh me have land in Africa you know me have land in Jamaica me have land. and they're not doing nothing with it they just leave it there and when somebody else could benefit from it. So you need to be serious and you need to plan ahead and you need to think about what you're doing. It's not a cop out. This is something that you need to take seriously. OK, so you, ne you need to pay um, all local transfer and registration fees um, for the plot of land that you own. Um, surveys and site plans and all pillories there will be somebody to guide you through the process but you do have to pay for or they're not going to be paying for that kind of stuff for you it's like anybody who's going to give you something free you, you have to build it yourself and you have to build on it yourself and you have to pay for all of the costs involved in building constructing that building um, they reckon about US $700 will pay for the um, surveys and site plans and stuff and that's about that's about right because that's about the same as the uk if you you know when you're purchasing a property and you have to get to pay stamp duty and you know um i've forgotten all the use of thing i used to work in um conveyancing but yeah they had, used to do all these oil searches they do searches and this and that so that costs about 500 quid so it's about the equivalent um, what else? Um, within 12 months, you should have started the construction. And within 24 months, you should have completed the instruction or at least have completed 50% of it. So no point going over there, like I said, getting the plot of land, coming back to UK and forgetting about it. Or going over there, starting something and then getting fed up or you've run out of money. Make sure you've got enough money up front to do what you want to do, to do what you need to do to get the property up and running so that you're a credit to your race and a credit to your heritage. That's what this is about. Um, it's about giving people an opportunity. And like I said, even if you fork out 40 grand, you can't get a house over here in 40, you can't get a house anywhere for 40 grand. It probably will cost a bit more because I remember um, 
there was um, a video about whether or not you wanted to go to Gambia. And I think the cost of properties there were about 55000 to 80000 and some of them. But a decent property, I think it was about 110 equivalent to about 110 sterling pounds. But even then, what can you get over in the UK for 110,000 sterling pounds? A little studio flat or something, if that. So you're still streets ahead. So don't think small. Don't think, oh, I'm going to go over there and get a cheap property and I'm going to, I might get it for 5,000 or I might get it for 10,000. I'm not going to be spending any money here. Don't go there with a mean spirit. You can't go there with a mean spirit. You have to go there with a fair spirit. Okay. Um, and also the last, I think, is a present. You have to give a present or a token of appreciation to the chief. The culture is that when an elderly person gives you a gift, you need to say madasi. Madasi means thank you. And it means you have to show appreciation. And that what made me smile is that you have to give them two bottles of Hennessy. And I'm thinking, two bottles of Hennessy? That's a strange gift. Can you imagine all these people going over there and giving him two bottles of Hennessy? Could start a little shop, couldn't they? Anyway, that's a requirement, apparently. You'll have to check that out. Um, find out if the chief does really want the Hennessy, or if it's going elsewhere, or what the real deal is. I just think that's a very strange criteria. That's the only thing that kind of threw me off a little bit, but... I don't know. It might be the culture um, and a designated amount of money to show appreciation. I don't know what that designated amount is. Apparently, you're going to be advised of that during the 10 day orientation period. Now, what I would have preferred is if that um, amount was in writing. So you don't feel as though you're be you're going to be um, a victim of fraud or somebody's going to try and get one over on you. You need to know that everybody is paying the same amount if it is a gift. And but maybe during that ten day orientation, there will be transparency. There will be you will be told in a group as opposed to one to one, and that you know you will get the sense that. It's genuine. It's a genuine show of appreciation and that it's reasonable. So let's hope that that is the case. Um, the offered land is designated for family legacy purposes and can only be liquidated or transferred through designated Pan-African village process. If it becomes necessary for a recipient to liquidate their property, a Pan-African village real estate agent will list and sell the property to some qualified candidate and the capital gains will be evenly shared between the recipient and the Esebu traditional council. Preferably a spouse or a descendant of the recipient will inherit the deed and the indentures at the discretion of the recipient. So like I said um, that that um, criteria information was provided by E. Cal Simpson and I hope you found it useful. Okay and that's all for now. And Claudia I hope this is this satisfies you, well, your request. Bye bye.